setting one, grab, setting one, back one, setting one, forward four, setting one, grab, something along those lines. Uh, Three hundred and forty-four two bars. Yep. So let's guess wrong properly. Two hundred fourteen. Even in this case, right? If he doesn't really have much of a bar, I'm still incentivized to press. Even if I have one bar because I you see I do like a hundred damage more than him. So that's the standing one stagger. All right. So we have this one, two, and two something else. We have one, two, and two command. Or we have the completion of the string. People are scared of the kick at the end. It does 50 damage. Whereas if we look here, so no special, 50 to 60 damage, 60 if his hands are burning. Remember, Nightwolf did 290 to 340. I'm gonna interrupt here, and then I'm gonna get like a full combo punish, right? I press, 126 damage. I press, 60 damage. So now that I'm scared, I wait for the fireball. And if I have bad, like, reflexes, or if I'm just playing online, He's gonna open me up, and that's why he would like hit, right? So like right now this is offline, so it's a bit easier, but that's why he would hit. Or he does this, and he tries to press after, he's done again. So if he staggers standing one, you guess right, you get this range of damage, 290 to 340. If you guess wrong, the worst case scenario is 257 damage, which is a medium type of risk. Don't think about the numbers, think about if, is this medium risk, low risk, or high risk. Standing one, two, he might kick you, or he might not. He's staggering standing one, two. Very low risk if he just kicks you, 60 damage. Standing one, two, three, but he's a bit insane, or he's making some reads. So if he kicks you and then flying kicks you, the worst damage possible would be 220. And then he does standing 1, 2, 3, and instead of just blocking, waiting for his turn to be over, sometimes he does standing 1, 2, 3, and then he low balls. And the worst case scenario, you get caught by the fireballs at 126 while you were trying to take it back. So the worst case scenario, simplified based on these attacks, medium, low, medium, low. That's the, the risk for you as Nightwolf when you want to fight a Liu Kang that uses his string standing 1, 2, 3, and chooses to stagger in, in between the, the, the three string hit in the cost reward department when it comes to Liu standing 1, 2, 3, because Liu standing 1, 2, 3 is not good. It is only good against characters that are turtling or that are overly respectful. So you have Liu Kang with his string 1, 2, 3, and there's two staggers in there, right? There's the one and then into something else. Then there's a one, two, and do something else. So those are the two safe, safe staggers, because whenever you stagger, you're potentially getting full comboed punished, if interrupted. But you have this one as well, which is like obviously very unsafe. So I guess it's three staggers. One into something else, one, two into something else, then one, two, three into something else, because there's a potential uh, special cancel at the end of this one, but that's a little bit easier to see. Anyways, you know I'm all about cost rewards in Mortal Kombat and almost always about guessing. If you're playing someone good and you can't make the read, like, they don't do some of these staggers very often. It's just, it's unpredictable. So you can't just turtle up and start respecting everything, or you can just start disrespecting everything based on how the cost reward is. And what that means is if you guess right and you interrupt a stagger and you get a full combo, or you guess wrong and maybe you get hit or you get comboed for guessing wrong. So let me show you the matrix that I've made. So I started like crunching these numbers. So obviously there's way more analysis, but I'm not going to get into all of that. But I started looking at the damage. So let's say you're playing against someone else and you have Liu Kang. If your opponent interrupts, how much damage they would get. So I put it at around 280 damage to a 350 it depends on the character but i think that's generally the average amount of a damage for a full combo and then i started calculating the damage of Liu kang so this is Liu kang here and don't worry about the numbers i'm going to show you everything with a demonstration but for example so if you go standing one two three that's the completion of the string and if your opponent tried to interrupt after standing one because he thought you were going to do standing one stagger into something else and he guesses wrong and you have no bar you can hit confirm and react and you would do either 163 damage or 197 if you had like the flames in your hand so it's really not that much and then i break it down with other bars so i look at these numbers and based on that if it's a 50 50 percent thing like it's a coin flip i don't know if he's going to interrupt i don't know if he's gonna stagger and he doesn't know if I'm gonna interrupt. No one knows anything, we just go and we hope for the best. If the opponent has more damage than Lu, when they guess right, it's in their favor. So for example, here if Lu Kang does standing one, staggered into something else, but before he can stagger, he gets interrupted by a full combo punish, it's obviously in the opponent's favor. But as the damage gets higher, so this is standing one, two, three, the opponent starts hitting at standing one, not standing one, he blocks, and then he hits trying to interrupt because he thinks you're gonna stagger with standing one, and he guesses wrong, and you hit confirm, 
you had two bars, you bicycle kick him with the hands on fire, that's 257 damage. So if you guessed right, you would have got a higher amount of damage if they didn't break, depending on which character you have. Like This is all just a, a very broad average, so it's a generalization. But generally speaking, you would still be at an advantage because you would still get more damage if you're the one that guessed right. So as Liu Kang's damage goes up, it becomes more risky to call him out on it. So that's why I ranked this one medium, for example. So let me give you like an exaggerated example. And again, don't worry about these numbers. I'm going to show you all of these with a demonstration. But like the one where you always want to press against Liu Kang is if he does standing 1-2. Standing 1-2 staggered into something else. You know, Ninja Killer, what he does, he does standing 1-2 into a command grab. I don't know why people respect standing 1-2. As soon as you see standing 1-2, regardless of if you think he's going to complete the string or not, just press because the damage is so low. So for example, if he kicks you, He's not going to be able to hit confirm. That's not enough. That's just one hit. So he can't safely convert. So he would do 50 damage. That's nothing. But if you touch him, that's 350. So it's it's low. Or, you know, it can, you can say it's very low. And if he makes a read against you, he flying kicks you. I don't remember how much that is. It's like 160, I think. Like a three flying kick or something like that. It's still not a lot. All right. So I, I took all these numbers and then I summarized them into like this chart. And now I'm curious to see how much damage the standing one, two, three callout is going to do. So that's supposed to be the thing right so it's on block he sees this he goes like this staggered and you press as soon as this is done as soon as the one two is done you press so what do you risk if you're playing against someone safe you risk just a kick like this because a very safe player is not gonna do this on block unless it's like a hard read and even then if it's a hard read you still risk your life for very little damage so how much damage would that be so we're gonna, we're gonna ignore like chip damage so i'm gonna do it just like this to make it easy so 190 and that's without fire in hand. And if I have fire in hand, so 190 to 228. So let's enter those numbers. All right, so I updated my thing. Let's see, sorry, my big face is in the way. Okay, so sending one, two, three, you interrupt after the two, and there's no cancel. There's no special cancel. No special cancel after the three kick because he's safe, right? He just kicks you. If you keep interrupting him, he might make a hard read and say, okay, this guy's always pressing after one, two. I'm just going to YOLO kick him, right? And pray that he's not blocking or else you're going to get really damaged. So you do sending one, two. You press three. The kick hits. You flying kick YOLO it. And without amp, you get 122 damage. And with one amp, 160. Let's see with a fire how much that would be. 146 or 228. Okay, so that starts to be a little bit more damaging to 28. Okay, so based on this, now I'm going to show you interruptions. So we're going to have three scenarios based on the staggers in his game. So cost reward, his game plan for standing one is to do something like this. So it's a mix between standing one, grab, standing one, back one, standing one, forward four, standing one, grab, something along those lines. If you stay strong, you should be fine. And if you're willing to get grabbed, if you can reach, is going, you're going to eat 130 damage. So that's the game plan for him, right? So he wants to confuse you, make you let go of block. Okay, we're going to interrupt him. Cost reward, and I'm like, I don't give a shit about what you might get, so I'm just going to go for it. And then I press... Uh, <clears throat> 344, two bars. Yeah, all right, 244, two bars. You saw that, right? So let's guess wrong properly. 214 for two bars of his, and when I do two bar of mine, it's 344. So based on a cost reward basis, if we're flipping a coin, we both don't know when we're going to interrupt each other. If I was a Liu Kang and I knew that this guy would interrupt from even from time to time, my standing one, I would never stagger that anymore. We just do the continuation, and then because of that, since I'm forced to always do the one, two, three, because he always interrupts my staggers, like this shuts down my game completely. Because then I, he just has to keep blocking the string until it's over. That's if he adjusts on time, right? And here, since the damage is like fairly low ideally i would not press in this situation when he has two bars right because if i press the damage is quote unquote too high but let's say he has one bar let's see how much that is 207 so not bad what if it's no bar if it's no bar i have like all the incentive in the world to always press no matter what so you're gonna have one bar only I'm still incentivized to press because I have to do so much more damage than him. Even in this case, right, if he doesn't really have much of a bar, I'm still incentivized to press even if I have one bar because I see I do like 100 damage more than him. So that's the standing one stagger. So standing one stagger, I said no amp, super low. Otherwise, you have to be a little bit more careful. So if you see a looking without amp and your character does a decent amount of damage, I see your Nightwolf with at least one bar. Yes, go ahead and interrupt. 
that's your time to guess and your, your strategy will be optimal at this point at this point so the the standing one two i press after standing one two so standing one two into something else so that's the mix it's either that or into command grab and that's what you see ninja doing often right and people aren't pressing because they're scared of the little kick at the end which is irrational in my opinion so all right, so we have this, one, two, and two, something else. We have one, two, and two, command, or we have the completion of the string. People are scared of the kick at the end. It does 50 damage. Whereas if we look here, so no special, 50 to 60 damage, 60 if his hands are burning. Remember, Nightwolf did 290 to 340. Even if he YOLOs it, it's still in my interest. Right, but let's not talk about YOLOing because most people don't YOLO. Actually, let's add one YOLO. So he's gonna YOLO, I press, he YOLOs, he gets 190 damage. It's unlikely that this will happen and the damage is low anyways, kind of. It, it is, right? It's like, it's in the medium range, but it's fairly low, so you should almost always take that risk. Except if they're becoming predictable, then of course you just wanna punish them. But usually what would happen against a safe player is just this. They have hit advantage, 14 hit advantage, I know you can't see it, but, and that's enough for them to get up on you and pressure you, but that's it with 60 damage like if you look at nightwolf's life it's really not that much damage compared to i'm gonna interrupt here and then i'm gonna get like a full combo punish right the optimals that lucan can do the most damage that he can do to me is if he's say 50 to 60 if he yolos it from time to time without amping not a lot and with one amp more if his hands are on fire and now we're gonna go do, go look at one more this is his usual range. His range is from about 290 to 340. Look at the range of Liu Kang. Like, this is not a very good range. That's if he guesses right. Look at this. This is a horrible range. So this means that if he staggers standing 1-2, even if you don't know if he staggers, whatever, you see standing 1-2, as soon as you see the second punch, you have to press. Because if he stops and he staggers, he gets full combo punished. And if you guess wrong, you get 50 to 60 damage. So that's not a lot. He might YOLO it, but even his YOLO, he's sacrificing his life potentially just for a tiny little bit of damage, which means it's unlikely for him to actually do this if he's a good player. And then we have the fireball, the standing 1-2-3, full fireball. This is like awful as well. So if he doesn't app, if he has no bar and he's gonna do it, he's risking his life for 60 damage. If that's if he gets you. And if he has bar, it's 126. So let's look at it. So what he wants to do, so he wants to like scare me with this fireball, right? You try to take back your turn, you get exploded. So now that I'm scared, I wait for the fireball. And if I have bad like reflexes or if I'm just playing online, he's gonna open me up. And that's why he would like hit, right? So like right now this is offline, so it's a bit easier. But that's why he would hit. So if you have no, if he has no bar and I try to press, 60 damage. And it's not just that he risks his life. So he risks his life when he staggers like this, and he risks his life when he does this. So he risks his life at both points, unless he just does this. This is the only way where he wouldn't risk his life if he just blocks after. But anything else after that is unsafe. Like even if he pokes, I think. Like if you try to mash. Now, of course, if I do standing one, he's going to get me, but you use any mid and you're going to open him up, right? Just a poke two is going to gel him. But anyways, I press 126 damage. I press 60 damage. What if I try something else? I press. Can I punish him? I don't think I can. At least there's that. No, I can't. And of course, if you end up blocking it, like I said, so he's done. You guess right for this one too. He's done. This is reactable. Or he does this and he tries to press after. He's done again. So he's really not getting a whole lot of damage. I mean, it's only the fireballs that can damage me really if I just mash after this. He's not going to damage me at all if he tries to hit after because um, I'm going to interrupt him. And if he pokes... He just gets a poke in. And that's again if I'm using high attacks. If I have like an iron frame mid, he's exploded every single time. He can't even poke me. The only thing he can do is to stop after 1, 2, 3. Or to launch a fireball after 1, 2, 3. So anyways, guys, that's it. I would say, you know, there are too many numbers here. So what you could potentially do is just remember when to press. The best way to think about this is what is the worst case scenario. 
Like maybe this is confusing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it here. So let's go through these results really quickly. If he staggers standing one, you guess right, you get this range of damage, 290 to 340. If you guess wrong, the worst case scenario is 257 damage, which is a medium type of risk. Don't think about the numbers, think about if, is this medium risk, low risk, or high risk. Standing one, two, he might kick you, or he might not. He's staggering, standing one, two. Very low risk if he just kicks you, 60 damage. Standing one, two, three, but he's a bit insane, or he's making some reads. So if he kicks you and then flying kicks you, the worst damage possible would be 228. And then he does standing one two three and instead of just blocking waiting for his turn to be over sometimes he does standing one two three and then he low balls low balls low fireball specials apps and the worst case scenario you get cut by the fireballs at 126 while you were trying to take back your turn and all these cases even night wolf's one amp is superior to all of this in his range because his low range for the combo that i showed you is 290 again that's if who can cannot break if, if he can break then the the no the whole thing changes you have to be very careful how much does it change is what mm -hmm. i want to know so let's do it really quickly so it changes by so i'm gonna get him to break 172 which is actually not bad because 172 is like like in the middle of what Liu Kang usually does kind of let's just put it here 172 if opponent has breaker so based on this if i'm a night wolf and Liu Kang does not have a breaker i'm gonna like really be aggressive with my attempt to interruption attempts so if I'm a Night Wolf and I have at least one bar, which in most cases you probably do, so you should try to not even pay too much attention to you know, if you have attack bar. Usually if you don't have attack bar, generally don't try to interrupt. Just don't take any risks. Only take risks if you have bar, at least one bar. So no bar, no bar, that's kind of confusing. Even if your opponent can break, you should probably still go ahead and take the risk as long as you have a defensive meter, at least one bar. If you have at least one bar, forget the opponent, just go for your interruptions. Start to make him less comfortable. But again, like we will look at these ranges, these are advantages for Nightwolf from a cost reward basis on all of these. So if I simplify even further, so the worst case scenario simplified based on these attacks, medium, low, medium, low. That's the, the risk for you as Nightwolf when you want to fight a Liu Kang that uses his string standing one, two, three, and chooses to stagger in, in between the, the, the three string hit. If you interrupt standing one, you're at a medium risk. If you interrupt standing one, two, you're at a low risk. Uh, let's, let's even forget this. Like, let's forget this one right here because most people are not yellowing and Sanos. And if you do standing one, two, three, and the interruption of standing one, two, three, taking back your turn, ignoring the fireball, is very low risk at 126. Again, this is the worst it can get. The worst damage you can take is 257. 60 damage for the standing one, two, three hits you. So again, like right here, the worst damage you can take from a standing one staggered, if you are on the losing end of it, is 257 only. That's the worst it can get. The worst it can get for a standing 1-2 and staggered into 3 is 60 damage. Usually, like in the normal world. The worst it can get for a standing 1-2-3 staggered or special cancelled into a low fireball. You don't have that mix. is 126. So Nightwolf has an advantage in the cost reward department when it comes to lose standing 1-2-3. Because lose standing 1-2-3 is not good. It is only good against characters that are turtling or that are overly respectful. From a numbers point of view, it's just terrible if you're Liu Kang and you should probably not do it. Or at least to do like sending one into poke. Start doing stuff into poke, like at least against Nightwolf, right? It's just not very good. Anyways, that's it. Peace.